All right, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, welcome, dear students, to the class. Um, today's lecture is the in the continuation of the yesterday's lecture, which we started uh, yesterday about the strategic significance of Central Asia um, in uh, Asia and in the world, uh, and uh, why the major powers are looking towards Central Asia. Um, so, uh, in the uh, last class we discussed about, uh, let me give you a brief uh, background that we discussed about the importance of Central Asia, historical significance of Central Asia, that it had uh, been, it had been, you know, a crossroad of different civilizations and Chinese Silk Route actually, it connected major civilizations in the world uh, with China and uh, China with their, you know, uh, lucrative silk trade, they connected all the major empires at that time, the Chinese and the Indians, Javanese, Persian Empire and the European Egyptians and Somalian civilizations. So all these civilizations were connected with China at one point of time and that was you know, very important era. Then we also talked about the uh, modern um, you know, history of uh, Central Asia in this, of this region. And this region has been considered as the pivot area by Hal Ford McKender, who's a geographer. And he um, has always, you know, emphasized that he who controls Eurasia, he's, uh, you know, going to control the destinies of the world. So Eurasia, the same region where Russia, Central Asian countries, Afghanistan, and parts of Pakistan are, you know, located. So this region is very important in modern times. We have already covered in the uh, previous classes yesterday. Uh, then we also talked about the importance of this region because of the uh, huge hydrocarbon resources. Um, so the five states, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan are very important, but the most important area in this area is Caspian Sea, where, you know, a huge amount of oil and gas resources are there. And uh, Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan, they have got significant share in the Caspian Sea region. And we also talked about the role of major powers, uh, just a snapshot of that, uh, but today we are going to cover that in detail. So today's lecture is going to focus on Caspian Sea region and uh, Caspian Sea, you know, it possesses huge amount of oil and gas resources and uh, the location of Caspian Sea is, you know, it is there, as you can see, the five states, it surround Caspian Sea region, the Russians, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan is not part of Central Asia, remember, and then you got Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan and Iran. So these five states actually, they, uh, they are, you know, um, controlling this region, which is called the Caspian Sea region. So <clears throat> let's understand the, uh, you know, geographic uh, geography of this region and uh, what is the length and breadth of this region. Uh, this is uh, this region, uh, which is called the Caspian Sea Lake. Basically, it's uh, 1000 kilometers long and it has got a width of about 435 kilometers. It has a surface area of about 143,000 a square kilometer, which is, you know, a huge area. And it, it has also got a depth of about 1000 meters, which make it very important, um, you know, uh, region in the world. So um, this is the location of Caspian Sea. And as you can see, it is uh, located in a very peculiar position in Central Asia. It's a landlocked lake, but it is regarded as Caspian Sea because of a huge amount of water presence and a huge amount of, you know, uh, the, uh, the 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 huge water body which is there, and uh, you know and because of that it is regarded as Caspian Sea. So Russians uh, they have got significant border, uh, and then you got Azerbaijan, then you got Iran, and then you got Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan. So, so these five states they control this region. And if you analyze, uh, you know, this region uh, connects may, may many economies, European economies, and other economies. Let's understand now the role of major powers specifically uh, in detail that why the major powers are involved in this region and what are their interests. The United States of America, as I told you before, that uh, it got chance uh, to establish itself in, uh, you know, in this region after 9-11 because after 9-11, uh, the militants, Al-Qaeda militants who were based in Afghanistan under the Taliban regime, they attacked the United States of America and uh, to take revenge and to, you know, establish themselves uh, in this region, the Americans came to this region. So initially the military uh, cooperation with, you know, countries uh, like Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and of course uh, the, you know, Uzbekistan, they provided America with air bases 
just to carry out you know aerial operations in afghanistan and just to, just to support their ground forces special forces along with the northern alliance forces to carry out you know operations against taliban in the initial phase so uh, this was the beginning and the united states of america established itself initially and they got bases significant bases in the region and a new uh, you know grand great game started in this region over the resources of this region so the americans uh, you know they were involved in this region just to you know um, uh, get hold of uh, you know oil and gas resources of the caspian sea region and the americans got success also in that regard which we are going to cover in the coming slides um so the hu huge amount of oil is there you know about 2 233 billion barrels of oil is there in uh, caspian sea region which is you know a huge amount of oil if you compare it with the saudis who are the largest oil producing country right now in the world they possess about 269 billion barrels billion barrels uh, and this region holds about 233 billion barrels which means this region could be very important in coming years for the energy global energy market they also this region also possess about 248 trillion cubic feet of proven proven uh, you know um, gas reserves also or uh, 293 trillion cubic feet of possible gas which might be uh, there and uh, it is going to uh, you know uh, be a very very uh, be crucial for the global energy market so this is the uh, importance of this region if you analyze the political and security significance of this region so united states of america uh, they believed that uh, to be here in this region it would serve many purposes for example uh, it is going to serve the american economic purposes uh, because they are going to secure uh, their you know these resources for their allies number two uh, this region is also important for the americans for counterterrorism operations and of course for the strategic reasons to keep closer eye on the Russians, Chinese, Iranians, and Pakistan, of course. So uh, this was the American idea uh, behind and coming to this region, and the, this is the political and security significance of this region for the Americans. Whereas the Russians, they concern their uh, ethnic, uh, their uh, you know Russian interests are more related to ethnic and territorial disputes and uh, more of political. Uh, the Russians uh, want to maintain their political dominance in this region because since 1992, Russians had been controlling the politics, economy, and the uh, foreign policy of this region. So these countries are subservient to the Russians even today for their even ec economic policies. These countries, they cannot get away um, you know, without taking permission from Russia. For example, look at the Georgia. It was attacked by the Russians. Why? Because Georgia wanted to cultivate ties with the uh, European countries. Then Ukraine in recent times in 2014 was also uh, punished for its support, um, you know, um, uh, to the European countries and NATO countries because they also wanted to cultivate ties with the, uh, the states. So this was, um, you know, uh, the, the, this is the Russian interest in this region. They want to dominate this region politically and you know, economically. Then you got China, which is also worried about the security issues in its uh, Xinjiang province, which has a population which is ethnically, you know, Central Asian. And uh, they also want to ensure that the energy security in the Caspian region can provide them, you know, long term, um, you know, um, support. So uh, let's quickly analyze, first of all, the US and the EU interest in this region. Uh, because um, the European Union, as I told you before, I think that they are going to import most of their oil and gas supplies, you know, uh, by 2030, about 94% of their gas and supplies by 90, you know, by 2030, which means uh, most of their, uh, most of their, more, most of their dependence uh, would be on the other countries like African countries, Latin American countries, you know, Persian Gulf, or maybe, uh, of course, the Central Asian states. So, uh, EU got involved in this region in 1993, and this was the time when the Soviet Union was recently, uh, it saw the breakup of Soviet Union, we saw, and the Soviet Union at that time was weak economically, militarily it was strong, it has always been strong, So, but um, in 93, Chevron, which was a company, it, a European company, it carried out a first deal with Kazakhstan just to exploit or just to you know um, get you know get resources from the Kazakh oil field Tengiz, 
and uh, they began to increase its influence in other energy rich caspian region as well azerbaijan and turkmenistan so uh, this uh, company chevron they started their operation in 93 and they carried out a deal of the century uh, which was carried out between the western oil companies and azerbaijani government on 20th september 94 and of course this uh, oil deal was also with the kazakh and turkmenistani you know uh, share of the caspian sea region so initially um, the idea was to explore uh, or you can say exploit resources of these countries from caspian sea region so as you can see uh, this is the position of azerbaijan baku and from there the americans uh, secured a base a uh, first pipeline which was baku sian pipeline and this pipeline actually originated from baku and it ends on the sian uh, which is the port city of you know turkey and from there it connects the rest of the world then you got another pipeline which also northern route which also export uh, oil and gas and uh, it goes through all the way from you know russian territories and then it goes to black sea and from there it goes to the european markets um so uh, this was the idea initially uh, these western countries they they secured um, tangaze this is the tangaze area of kazakhstan and from there they also got you know resources from uh, this area ba baku azerbaijan and they also uh, you know carried out deals with turkmenistan so western countries european countries they got involved in this region after 93 and um, they carried out a deal with uh, you know uh, these states kazakhstan turkmenistan and azerbaijan so initially these uh, you know uh, deals were very important as you can see the chevron interest are there in the uh, kazakhstan uh, region of caspian sea region and this is the largest you know oil field of uh, kazakhstan and uh, you know uh, from there they uh, import their oil and gas and let me tell you one more thing about this that this pipeline it passed through russia uh, a huge territory of russia and russia if russia wills it russia can block it russia can stop it so this is the reason that this is the dependence of eu on russia that they could never any impose any sort of economic or major sanctions against russians when they uh, annexed crimea in ukraine so um, this is the dependence of european countries on russia and that's why i i told you that this region is a pivot area because uh, the dependence of these major economies is on this region uh in what uh, one more uh, detailed map as you can see the red uh, dots red lines would tell you about the gas pipelines these are the gas pipelines which you know uh, uh the dotted one are under construction and the remaining one are already completed so the uh, you know these uh, red uh, lines you know it it mostly it originate from you know caspian sea region and then it goes to iran then it goes to pakistan and then it goes to china and all the way from uh, russia to european markets and from azerbaijan to european markets turkey and there are many oil pipelines which are you know and gas pipelines which are under construction the green one shows about the oil pipeline and uh, caspian sea is again in the center of these you know oil pipelines so this is the importance of caspian sea and its region and many major powers china russia european countries even including pakistan and uh, india they are also involved in this region just to secure these resources so the first pipeline which americans and the europeans secured from this region was baku tbilisi sian pipeline btc and I, as i told you before this pipeline you know originates from baku um, here is the red line which tells you about this pipeline it originated from here and then it ends in sian and from there uh, by maritime routes it uh, is transported to the european economy european market so this was a major you can say step uh by the you know western countries and um, these western powers now they are heavily dependent on baku tbilisi pipeline um so this is another map of that particular thing and then you got um you know us assistance to the caspian sea states after 911 as i told you before united states of america came to this region and us provided about you know 74 million dollars to these states the central asian states and these uh, you know uh, this money uh, was you know distributed in uzbekistan and uh, kyrgyzstan uh, just to secure their bases for military operations in afghanistan but the russians actually 
uh, they played their role and uh, they had pressurized these countries uh, like for example kyrgyzstan and uh, the americans had to leave this region and now the americans are not enjoying any base in this region because the russians have got all these bases from central asian powers because russia is the dominant power in this region so russian interests in caspian sea region are you know obvious because the russians have got major chunk of caspian sea region inka bhi wahan pe share hai so that's why the russians are also coming up with many oil and gas pipelines from this region uh, especially you know russia launched two other you know pipeline like blue stream 2 and south stream these are two projects which are uh, you know in direct competition with the nabokov project which is european project for example so the russians are dominant power it shares about 6000 km border with pakistan central asian powers and from there you can see the russian oil and gas pipeline uh, they also you know originate from this region and it goes all the way from you know uh, russia and then uh, it enters the european markets so the europeans are buying about 100 billion dollars of gas from russia and their lifeline their economy their household is totally dependent on the russians so uh, russia is you know very much you know interested in that secondly russia is also investing a lot of money uh, in the caspian region countries uh, nuclear sector for example uh, why the russians are providing them you know nuclear uh, enrichment plants power plants uh, for civil purposes they are not for the um, nuclear you know uh, weapon purposes the idea behind is that uh, with this particular thing uh, these countries are going to reduce their dependence on oil and gas and they are going to rely on nuclear energy so once they rely on nuclear energy the russians would take their gas and uh, or oil and it would uh, you know supply to the western markets on their own rates and these countries would you know um, utilize less uh, oil and gas resources so this is the idea behind the russians are you know very smartly uh, they are you know deviating these countries from oil and gas resources um, other than that Russia uh, this region i told you before that they are also uh, this region is rich in you know uranium deposits especially kazakhstan and uzbekistan so russians have also cultivated ties with these states just to improve their uh, deposits and uh, just to extract these resources and to improve their overall you know uh, nuclear capacity civil nuclear capacity not military capacity uh, i think it pata nahi maine aapko bataya ke nahi bataya ke when the Uh, russians uh, you know they were dismembered in 90s then kazakhstan got more than 100 nuclear warheads because it was ex soviet state ab kazakhstan ke paas itne zyada nuclear warhead aa gaye to uh, they had no idea what to do about it the russians asked them to keep it and the russians were not you know uh, worried about it but the uh, kazakh government uh, they decided to abandon that program and they you know uh, voluntarily they carried out disarmament Uh, with the help of the united states of america why because uh, kazakhstan um, well, first of all if you uh, got nuclear weapon definitely um, you have to secure it you need technical expertise you need everything every you need to spend more and more resources just to secure these resources uh, nuclear weapons so and secondly the most important thing for getting nuclear weapons are two for example first is global dominance which obviously kazakhstan never wanted secondly um regional security issues for example uh, so the kazakh government is i think uh, sharing border with russia which is uh, just like uh, a father figure for them because they are not fearing any threat threat from the russians secondly they share border with the china which is also not aggressive then they also share border with you know smaller countries of uh, caspian uh, central asian states so the security aspect was not there so that's why kazakh government abandoned their nuclear program and their uh, weapons program and they uh, did not keep nuclear weapons uh, with them that was just a, a anecdote russians are also uh, you know coming up with you know many um, frameworks just to provide security to this region for example csto which is collective security treaty organization and sco which is another uh, organization shanghai cooperation organization just to tackle uh, non traditional aspect of threats for example uh, terrorism and extremism in this region is uh, rapid widespread imu islamic movement of uzbekistan chechen militants 
uh, Hezbu Tehreer and many other terrorist organizations are operating in this region. Now ISKP from Afghanistan is also operating in this region. Just to tackle these uh, terrorist organizations, one, number two, to tackle drug trafficking from Afghanistan um, and to overcome these uh, threats, which are which come under, under the purview of non-traditional security threat. So Russians are helping these states in this uh, in their war against terrorism, in their war against drug trafficking. So that is also uh, one of the Russian concern in this region because every year about 30,000 Russians die because of the Afghan drug trafficking and drug related violence. On the other hand, it uh, also began to influence the region countries to withdraw uh, the US military bases from their territories. As I told you before, the Russians, uh, you know, uh, they provided a package to Kyrgyzstan uh, and a very lucrative package to Kyrgyzstan um, just to kick out America from this region. For example, uh, the Russians, they have uh, signed various military agreements with these, uh, you know, Central Asian states and more than 14,000 Russian soldiers they are present now in these countries, uh, especially in the ex-Soviet states and uh, more specifically in the Central Asian powers. So these countries can never uh, challenge the Russian uh, political hegemony in this region. Uh, the Kirk president, uh, you know, Bakayev announced that the US Manas air base would be closed. So the Americans desperately wanted this base and they wanted to double the, you know, price uh, of lease, but the Russians, they came up with the offer and the Russian Prime Minister Medvedev at that time offered them $1.7 billion of loan uh, for a dam, uh, which, you know, I told you before the Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, they are rich in water resources. So they provided about $1.7 billion of dam, um, uh, loan for a dam, and then uh, the Russians also extended about $450 billion million of loan and $150 million grant for budget stabilization. So this was almost, you know, a huge money for a country like Kyrgyzstan. And uh, Russia also agreed to cancel, you know, 180 million debt, uh, which was uh, um, there on Kyrgyzstan. So in exchange uh, with all these things, the uh, Russians, they pressurized uh, the, you know, Kyrg government to kick out the Americans from this region. So America got a base here in, uh, you know, Manas Air Base, which was very important. Uh, for the Americans to keep closer check on China, Russia, and of course their operations in Afghanistan. So this was a, a very crucial base for the Americans. So that, but the Russians they played their, their role, and uh, the Americans had to leave this air base. Uh, I think in 2011. So ultimately, uh, America had to leave. So uh, the American, the Russians are also playing a very important role. Um, two SCU, as I told you before to fight against terrorism, extremism, organized crime, uh, human trafficking, for example, illegal drug trafficking, weapons trade. So Russia is very much, uh, you know, influential in this region and they are helping these states to overcome such type of threats. Now, the third power, uh, last but not least, is China, which is again dominant power in this region. And uh, we have already covered that uh, Chinese are there uh, just for two interest, economy and security. So for that matter, the Chinese are, you know, spending a lot of money in this region. They have already spent about $46 billion and they provided a CPEC type of, you know, project in this region in which they are developing infrastructure of these countries, especially Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. And they are also helping these states um, in security matters. So China shares about 3,300 3, kilometer border with Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. And it's a long border. So um, with this uh, connectivity, Chinese are now securing their political, economic, and strategic ties in this region. And uh, this is the reason that the Chinese are now providing a lot of help to this country. So the um, uh, currently, if you analyze, 80% of the Chinese, uh, you know, oil imports come from Persian Gulf, Middle East, and then it passed through a narrow corridor, Strait of Malacca. Uh, definitely, which is, you know, a very crucial area because of the U.S. presence, piracy issues and long distance. So China uh, realized that uh, why not develop resources in their neighborhood? So that was the reason that uh, Chinese came up with the idea that to provide, you know, four, you know $46 billion uh, to these states, Asian states, and to develop uh, not only these states, but also uh, get resources for themselves. And uh, these resources are definitely uh, going to shape up the Chinese economy and would help Chinese economy in the 
and growth. So that was the reason that China uh, developed these areas. And as you can see, Turkmenistan China pipeline, Kazakhstan China pipeline, these oil and gas pipelines were developed and it connected China, China's mainland with the uh, Caspian Sea region of Turkmenistan and Caspian Sea region of Kazakhstan. So with these pipelines, the Chinese are, you know, overcoming their energy woes. Uh, another map is here and in which you can see the detailed, the Chinese, you know, infrastructure here in this region, oil and gas pipelines, which China developed. And these resources are going to help the Chinese in future to sustain their economic growth and to be at par with the United States of America and surpass the US by 2030 and become a number one economy in the world. So um, this was the importance of China and uh, you know Caspian Sea region. Uh, other than that, uh, well, now the why the Chinese are you know spending a lot of money in uh, you know in Central Asia. Understand this aspect as well, because uh, uh, every country, whenever they uh, invest in any country, um, definitely they have got their political, economic, and strategic interest behind. Here in this context, the Chinese are facing problems in this problem, in this area, Uyghur province. Now this Uyghur province is very important for China because of uh, many reasons. One, uh, this region is uh, you know, a nuclear testing site of China because Chinese have got about 100 nuclear warheads stationed in this region, according to different estimates. So for that matter, this region, strategically, this region is very important. Number two, uh, this region is important uh, for economic purposes as well because the 40% of Chinese oil and gas, which they extract from their own uh, homeland from China, 40% is extracted from this region. So for that matter, this region is again very important for them. They don't want to leave this region. Now, the only problem for, with this region is that this region is landlocked and it is away from the Chinese mainland uh, maritime boundaries. And this distance is about, I think, um, 5,000 plus kilometers. It's a huge distance. And this is the reason because of their landlocked status, this region could not get, uh, you know, development. This region could not improve. So about uh, nine or 10 million, uh, you know, Yogor uh, population, which is living there, and mostly they are Muslims. They are now fighting with the Chinese uh, government because of the socio-economic deprivation, because of the Chinese strict laws to suppress, uh, you know, religious minorities there, especially the Muslims. So, um, the, but the main problem with this region is socio-economic. And that is the reason that now China is developing this region with the help of Pakistan. And from here, they are going to connect uh, this region with Pakistan. And uh, when they connect this region with Pakistan, so automatically they are going to cut short the longer distance of, you know, Persian Gulf, for example. Right now, they import oil and gas from Persian Gulf, which is a huge distance, which is about you know, 10 to 12,000 kilometers. And uh, it's a very risky, long area, and it is costly as well. But now, once they complete this CPAC project with Pakistan, so automatically they are going to cut short their distance of you know, about eight to 10,000 kilometers. And this, this you know, CPAC uh, pipelines and oil pipelines and gas, pipe, you know, these things or railway links or road links would be just 2200 kilometers, which means they are going to save a lot of money and uh, automatically it is going to give boost to uh, this area and of course as a whole to the Chinese economy. So China is also very much dominant here and um, in a nutshell, Caspian Sea region is going to be very important region in future energy market and uh, this would be, uh, there would be a new great game over Caspian Sea in which the US, Russian, Chinese, they would get involved. Of course, European countries would also be there. Automatically, arms race among these states would continue. The Chinese would grow, the US, Russians would grow, and these countries are now improving their you know, arms and equipment. They are adding up more and more capabilities, like the Russians recently came up with you know, S-500. Uh, air defense system. Previously, they had S-400, but now they have come up with S-500, which is the most advanced air defense system in the world. So any aircraft in the American inventory, uh, it cannot evade from, you know, S-400, S-500. So these are the capabilities. Um, the Chinese are also developing huge naval force in the region, um, especially in the East Asian side. Uh, they where the Americans are deployed uh, in Japan. So uh, that is also a huge challenge for them. 
because the Chinese are very much dominant in that region, in the Asia Pacific region. The Americans cannot compete with China militarily in this region. America only got seventh fleet in this region, which is one aircraft carrier along with many small ships and a force of about 64,000 uh, men. But the Chinese, they, they have got a huge army, air force, navy stationed in this region. And they are you know, not in comparison with the Americans. They, they possess all these capabilities. And of course, the Americans are also coming up with you know, modern technologies, but uh, the you know, tri triangular uh, issue, the, the, the great game is going on and it would continue in the future. Proxy war would also be there in the region. Recently, you have seen that the Americans were defeated in Afghanistan. And who played the proxy war against the Americans? The Russians, Chinese, Pakistanis, and Iranians. So these were all together and they played proxy war uh, against America in this region. And Americans were kicked out from this region. The Americans um, uh, would definitely uh, uh, fight back and uh, let's see how it unfolds in future. Um, Americans were also defeated in Iran, Syria, um, in other parts of the world. And the Chinese and the Russian, their alliance is, you know, working uh, against the Americans. So in future, this region would remain unstable uh, because of the uh, vestige in trust of these major powers. And obviously, uh, Russians um, uh, and the Chinese are, you know, dominating this region. And with the help of these countries uh, like China and Russia, this region may develop in future. But uh, instability uh, and turmoil would be there. Why? Because these states are not independently operating. They are totally under the influence of Russia, whether it is political, economic, or strategic influence. And these states are landlocked, and they are totally dependent on uh, Russians in the region. And they cannot cultivate good ties with the European economies um, on the fear because of the Russian fear, because Russia would definitely um, you know, always keep its political influence over these countries. So guys, this was all from my side. Uh, if you got any question, you can ask and uh, I will send you the, uh, you know, uh, lecture in detail or audio video. So if you got any queries, you can ask, no problem. Thank you very much.